we have the very talented Bradley Walker, who is currently working on Sinestro with the very talented Cullen Bunn. So, Brad. No, we need to turn his mic on, though. Oh, sorry. I jumped the gun. Is it happening? Yeah, there you're is, good now. Okay. All right. What do you want to draw today? Uh, I've been warming up with Sinestro, so I'll just... Sinestro? Plug, plug the book and I'll just plug the draw book. Sinestro. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but before we talk about Sinestro, I love Sinestro. He's one of my favorite characters. I want to talk about Green Lantern New Guardians because that was one of my favorite things. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, from the New 52. Um, you and I had talked about Green Lantern New Guardians. Oh, actually, just Kyle in general, like two years ago, uh, and how he is and was, I guess, now that he's in Omega Men and it's a little different. Uh, a core of one. Yeah, yeah. And how he was, I think you said he was your favorite Green Lantern, right? Uh, he was the one that I sort of, when I started reading Green Lantern was when he had come along. Right. Um, and I think there was a whole, I mean, certainly judging by our panel earlier, there was a whole generation of readers who really, Kyle was their guy. Right. And he still gets a huge amount of applause in yeah. those panels. Um, and it was fun to do that book because, you know, like you were, you were sort of saying, uh, when he first became Green Lantern, he was the only Green Lantern. He mm -hmm. was he was a core of one. And then, so in our book, it was cool that he was just the only the only White Lantern again. Y yeah. He had a different ring, but uh, it was sort of the same the same premise that it was Kyle was the only one with that kind of power in the universe. Yeah, I, I know for me, uh, he was my Green Lantern because when I when I was getting, I was like in and out of comics as a young kid, and yeah, Ion was were, were the books that I was reading. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of a lot of people were into the show and John Stewart is their Green Lantern and Hal was dead for so long but Kyle was definitely mine um, what a uh, uh, what, was that your first work with DC at the New 52 is no, it, no no I did uh, I started on some Batman stuff maybe like 12 years mm -hmm. ago I did some of the War Games crossover anybody, if anybody remembers that mm -hmm. um, and I did a bunch of Superman like uh, yeah tons of tons of other stuff what's your favorite thing that you've done so far you don't uh, have to say Sinestro but it has been <laughs> awesome <laughs> Uh, the GL stuff has been really fun. It's been kind of a bummer that I, I've been on different Green Lantern stuff now for a little over two years probably, and yeah. I, I haven't gotten to do that much green. <laughs> <laughs> it's been all different colors. Um, do they – do or do you tend to stick to more space stuff like futuristic and sci-fi? or I is do that just like it. I, I, I probably will get to the point here soon where I'm like enough – <laughs> and I need to go and because uh, I did Guardians of the Galaxy too for Marvel uh -huh. before the Green Lantern stuff, so it, it's actually been like a lot of time and space for me. Um, Is it easy when you don't have to draw like a background? You could just do stars or whatever. You know? Yeah, and I I try not to do that. Like yeah. I I see a lot of artists that maybe s take like the opportunity to do no backgrounds because the colors can just drop in a bunch of stars. Yeah. But I kind of like uh, my my inker and I really discussed going into the book that um, you know, we wanted it to feel like a really dense environment in space and you know, to sort of like have sort of like a fantasy element to it yeah. so that it felt like a really lush world. Yeah. And we talked about how we wanted to approach it and different influences and stuff. And so that was really fun because he and I were like really on the same page about it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I really try not to, not to skimp and not to... Um, can you see any of this yet? It's I getting there. I promise you can you'll kind see of it. see it. You'll see yeah. it in a minute. There we go. Yeah, you're getting there. Oh, look at that. It gets <laughs> darker. Um, I promise it'll appear in a minute. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the stuff about cosmic, quote, unquote, books or um, science fiction that I really love is, is uh, the worlds and all the yeah. weird. And uh, I yeah. feel like a lot of what Cullen has done with, I mean, not just Sinestro, but Lobo, uh, has been like that culture building, that world building yeah. in space. You know, yeah, he talks about that a lot. Like it's that being the, the fun for him is sort of the, the world building aspects of it. Right. I mean, because these are worlds that don't exist. And, yeah. you know, and, and it's kind of like a clean slate. And there's a lot of comics out there that don't dive deep into where these people come from and what their culture's like. And, you know, you just assume everything's like Earth or whatever. But I think Cullen really takes the time to go in and be like, all right, this is. Uh, you know, uh, what's the planet? Hey, here's a trivia question. Where's Sinestro from? What was that? Kuragar. Correct. And I did remember it. I just, I didn't need <laughs> you. Anyway, 
uh, he really delves into like the culture. I mean, now that the planet has been destroyed. Um, well, we have new Korrigar now. Right. Yeah, well, so yeah. He's establishing. He's sort of like, uh, especially now in in the since uh, post convergence with all the Green Lanterns gone, mm -hmm. Sinestro is sort of establishing his core as sort of the new protectors of the universe. Right. And uh, so we have the opportunity to to build the Yellow Lanterns. Like I don't know if they're actually called Yellow Lanterns or Sinestro. I I, it's always <laughs> unclear. Um, you know, he's sort of like taking that very, very seriously that he can sort of run the universe now the way that he always saw fit, that the Green Lanterns never let him. Right. <laughs> we're always giving him such a hard time about. It's It's got to be fun also with the Sinestro Corps, the Yellow Lanterns, whatever they're called. Uh, it's got to be fun because they're all fear-based. You know, they all have some sort of background with scaring people or whatever. So they have <laughs> these physical features that reflect that. So as an artist, I can only imagine it's just fun to draw someone with no lips and their teeth are always short or whatever, you know. Th like yeah, I mean, I love doing all the alien characters and stuff. Um, that kind of stuff is, you can just kind of like go all out. You don't have to stick to any sort <laughs> of semblance of reality or uh, it can just be, you know, as fun as you want to, if you want to have fun that day, <laughs> go crazy if you want to. <laughs> where, where do you like come up with your inspiration for, like I don't know if, if you get things from Cullen and he's like, I need this guy that has a horse face or whatever. Uh, you know? He does a little bit. He's really cool about, like, he'll say, you know, here are some guys who could be in this panel if you want. If you don't want, draw whoever <laughs> you want, um, which is which is great. Like, that's the be for me as an artist anyway, that's the best thing is, like, give me something in case I'm just not super creative that day. Yeah. <laughs> give me, you know, some, some ideas to sort of, like, use as a jumping off point. Um, but, you know, don't really feel like you're you're bound to to any of these visual ideas, and he, he does that exactly like, like I would yeah, I've, want I've, from a writer. I've talked to other artists at, at times about like space books and like this, and a lot of times that writers just say, all right, and they drove a spaceship through the space or whatever. They don't say anything about what the spaceship looks like, and then the artist has to sit there and design a new spaceship. And, yeah. and I, th I feel like it might you could get lost in that where you're trying to design like the functionality of this ship. I, I don't know how deep you go into it. I mean, that's kind of like, that's part of the job. I think Stan Lee always has this quote where he says, uh, you know, comic artists are, you know, Stan Lee's hyperbole, but uh, he says, you know, comic artists are the best artists in the world because you have to be able to draw anything and you got to draw it on a moment's notice. Right, you yeah. got to figure it out. Um, and, you know, it's, it's true. Um, so if somebody calls for a spaceship and if they don't give you a lot, you got to come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> does Colin ever like drop pictures in a word doc or anything? Like he does not. I have had artists who I, I did um, a bunch of issues of uh, Grant Morrison's Action Comics, and he would send us a lot of like ballpoint pen sketches of characters or that uh, he did page layouts that he did. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Grant's actually signing at the moment over there. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi, Grant. I just mentioned you. I name dropped. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, are you a, a, a big sci-fi fan? Is that why, like, you can draw from your own, like, experiences or what you like? Yeah, or I am. Um, and certainly, like, I feel like its comics got more and more grounded in recent years, and and uh, the expectation was for them to be gritty and real. Sure, yeah. I think I've enjoyed going the other the other direction right, and yeah. doing um, more fantastic stuff. Yeah. Is uh, is it a little? daunting for to be on Sinestro. I mean, he's personally he's one of my favorite characters, but he's also been drawn by some of the best artists in the biz, you know, and yeah, right. and he's got such a rich history and I uh I definitely feel like you guys have lived up to the hype and lived up to the character, but it, is it daunting ever to like sit down and be like, "All right, I'm on Sinestro. I need to do this right, you know. I need to prove it to him." Uh I mean, I kind of jumped on. I started with issue 9. So I kind of, Colin had already really hit the ground running. Um, and I didn't really have time to weigh it too much. I was saying in one of the press interviews earlier, uh, I looked at a lot of, uh, you know, I referenced a lot and looked at the way different people drew Sinestro and stuff. But I also definitely felt like I didn't want to come in with like some wildly unique version that was all <laughs> mine that yeah. sort of like made a hiccup in the story between issue eight and nine. Right. I didn't really feel like that was my place and I didn't want to interrupt what... Uh, what readers had been sort of like going through with him. Um, and also I felt like, you know, if I were drawing a uh, regular Green Lantern, 
and Sinestro was a villain in it, I would draw him very differently. I'd love to do like a real Gil Kane type of like bobblehead. You know, he had the really like six foot seven, like spindly body and, the, and like a big bulbous alien head. And I'd love to kind of go in that direction and do something really wild. But in his book, like he's the hero right. and he very much sees himself as the hero. And I feel like the reader should identify with him. So I made him a little more, uh, I feel like it's a push to say handsome. No, I know what you mean, yeah. But like the reader should identify with him some. Sure. Um, and, that, and so that was sort of like a, a focus of mine. I always think about... Uh, Make him relatable. Yeah. yeah uh, Unbreakable. Samuel L. Jackson had a whole ex explanation on like the way the heroes look and the way the vi villains look. And, right. and I, I would say like Sinestro is probably the prototypical villain, what, how he used to look with the, you know, the, the squinty eyes, the huge yeah. head, like you're saying. And I could definitely understand, like, giving him a square jaw and a, a no more normal size. I mean, I still give him a very, like, angular, you know, angry face. And he always has a yeah. very smug look and, like, a raised eyebrow uh -huh. and uh, or, like, a sneer, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I just didn't want to make him look too unrelatable and uh, alien. and Keeping the hair n nice, high and tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't make the, you know, forehead quite as giant, but I give him, like, a... His hairline is receding so far that <laughs> it sort of like hints at the, the real Gil Kane yeah. head that he had. Well, in terms of your like art process, how, like, how often do you draw? How often is it like, how long does it take you to do a page and get a book done? Uh, well, is my editor here? Yeah, I, I don't see anybody. <laughs> I think we're free. You know, you kind of need to do one a day. Uh, one page? You, you kind of have to do five a week. I, there are certainly weeks where I don't. And I think I, I frustrate my editor to no end because I'll have weeks where I do, like, two or three, and then I'll blow through, like, right before the deadline, I'll blow through, like, eight, nine pages in a week. Yeah. And they're like, look, <laughs> you sure you're going to pull this off? And I'm like, I do this every month. I know. <laughs> it's not fun for me either. Um, but I managed to – I always seem to manage to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have, a, I have a Sinestro trivia question, another one. What is Sinestro's first name? You won the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody correct. else was shouting out. T-H-A-A-L. That is correct. There's no prizes, though. Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, do you have a studio at home, or do you... Uh, would I call it a studio? <laughs> uh, I got a desk. Yeah. <laughs> But you work with pencils first. You do the layouts, and yeah. and, and uh, do you use any special techniques or tools that would be? I I'm like one of the most traditional guys left. I think um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't work digital really at all. I mean I'll, I'll use the computer for a lot of reference. Yeah. Um, but I don't really work digitally at all. Um, I do it very traditionally. I, I take I take photo reference for figure work a lot just to make sure, sort of is like a safety net. Like yeah. It's better to have photo reference there that you can fall back on. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just take it with my laptop, like just sort of like a pose or like a shoulder. Yeah. Um, and that's better than like spending an hour erase, erasing, you know. Um, do you like Google a, a photo or do you yeah. actually take the photo? Oh, uh, okay. well, for figures, I'll just take it of myself. So like every, sometimes people will be like, you're, characters kind of look like you and I'm like well <laughs> they're all me hey, if you need any models I'm always there <laughs> <laughs> I can't get you on the phone at <laughs> three in the morning when I'm finishing a page <laughs> when you're yeah behind <laughs> um is uh is this looking like Sinestro yeah. oh yeah, yeah it looks like he looks mean yeah but he looks cool at the same looks, time looks annoyed <laughs> Where did uh, where how how did you get into drawing? Like, were you a kid drawing back? Yeah, then? I I always drew, um, since I was real little. And I was really into the um, sorry to mention the competition, but I was really into that '60s Spider-Man show they would show. Uh, Bro, come on, <laughs> not cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> they would show reruns of that. I lived in Chicago, and they would show reruns of that, and I would just draw like. My my mother showed me how to do this. Yeah. Did you ever think that you would be in comics? Uh, yeah, I always kind of. Is that what that. you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that young, but. So I would do this all the time. <laughs> Bro, this is on the screen behind <laughs> <Yeah>. you. My <laughs> boss is here somewhere. <laughs> 
Um, that was that's a portfolio piece. I'm going to show that at the other booth. No, that's good. We'll give it out to a fan. That's fine. <laughs> did um when you were younger, did you d- you used to make comics when like? No, I never like was that ambitious really to go through the whole. I, th- I think a couple times maybe like in high school, and you'd always get to you know, that age. You get to like page two, and yeah. then you're like. Drawing the pages sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to draw pictures of the like, character. Oh, my friends are outside. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and now I'll do the part that I hate the worst. Drawing this logo over and over. Is the logo hard to, to manage? such a pain. <laughs> do you have like, uh, a Sinestro Core lantern in your... Uh, uh, I don't have a lantern. I've got like one of those... Uh, they made them years ago. Like one of those action figures that's like this big or something. Yeah. And he's got a lantern with him. So at least I can sort of like turn the chest in, in yeah. space. I remember reading the, uh, I think it was like Ethan Van Skyver when they created the logos. Yeah, the, I the think th- this is his fault. <laughs> it's very detailed, but it's like, you know, reflective of fear and, yeah. you know, like <laughs> uh, Larflis' symbol was, you know, everything's pointing inward. and There was thought behind it. Oh, I was guess. there? Okay. Uh, no, I, I, get, I, I don't really remember the exact thing, but. I guess there was no thought to the artist that was going to be drawing it eventually. Yeah. So I'm sorry to hear about that. But uh, I mean, just the regular Green Lantern one is pretty kind of difficult to, you know, when you're moving the figure, if you just draw that thing with some a compass, that's fine. Yeah. But when you're sort of like moving the figure in space and like, you know, there's different uh, contours to the body that yeah. it sort of has to like move around. It's really sort of tricky. Is it? In your in your mind, is his symbol like on cloth, or is it like a shield of sorts? Well, I, I don't know, because I didn't like redesign them. I didn't design them originally. I didn't redesign I guess, them yeah, for New okay. Fifty Two. I think when New Fifty when they did the new designs for New Fifty Two, hey, Joshua Dysart, everybody. Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> now my picture's taken. Now I'm uncomfortable. Now it's weird. <laughs> Uh, Thanks for making it weird. The Green Lantern <laughs> one is raised, I know, now. I think so. I, I don't think that this one is necessarily drawn that way. I'm always just curious. So. I don't know. I'm a huge Green Lantern fan. I, in my office, I have all the lanterns up on my shelf. It also acts as like a little fence. I, I really so should be calling about. you for reference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll stand in. That's fine. I think we just have a few more minutes um, to finish up. Let me think. Is there any Sinestro trivia that we can give out this uh, Sinestro Spider-Man hybrid that you did here. You couldn't have wrapped up before I started the symbol. <laughs> you had to yeah, say, no, we're going to no, wrap up now. right as I'm finishing no, you this. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a good trivia that we have? From Sinestro. Uh, what's Sinestro's daughter's name? Yeah, that's a good one. And you don't answer. <laughs> you hear me? What is Suge- Sinestro's daughter's name? Anybody know? Sorenek Natu. You said it wrong, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> is it? I don't. I don't even know how. I to have say no it. idea either. I don't I think r- it, there I is a right it. way to say it. <laughs> you have won this awesome sketch of Sinestro. Well, I feel so bad for the guy that knew everything. <laughs> <laughs> if you could cast Sinestro as one person, who would it be? I thought that guy that played him in the movie was Mark the Strong best was part of that awesome, movie. Right? He was good. <laughs> he was really good. Can't I'm always curious. All right, if they don't want to make that movie again, can't they make a Sinestro movie and just I guess so. get him back? We should get on that. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks awesome. for everybody for hanging out. Thanks. This is a lot of fun. Awesome. Let's hear it for Brad Walker. Come back tomorrow. We have plenty of artist demonstrations.